Okay, let's talk about the air management on the back end of the car. So we've already hooked up our paddle valves and that's all gone good. Um, we will have to leak test them. We know that we've got an ever so slight leak right now. Um, so we'll work, work on that last because then we can leak test the entire thing. Now, here's what we got. We've got an air tank, we've got an air compressor, we've got the drain line pieces, various fittings, um, plugs, the tape, water air separator, and a pressure valve, or pressure switch rather. So, this is kind of a mock-up of how it's gonna look. I am gonna get a nicer um, adapter, one that doesn't require so many different connection points for this side. Um, what you got is a 3 8 NPT to a quarter inch NPT, and it has to do through all these kind of obnoxious fittings. You can get a straight conversion one, so I'll be doing that. But here's the bulk of how it's gonna look. So your water air separator is gonna hang off on the passenger side, um, plugging the upper passenger side one. Um, I should note that off of the water air separator, that line is gonna run to your air management paddle valves up at the front. Now we'll move over to the driver's side. Uh, I adapted straight off of the tank the pressure switch, so that's gonna connect right here on this lower portion. Um, what that switch does is it sees a ignition source on one side of it, and then on the bottom side of it, it uh, sends a pulse to a relay that allows your air compressor to kick on. It's pretty slick. The upper part is where the outlet, the output from the air compressor is going to go in here with a check valve in line. And with the location of each of these components, I'm actually going to be adding in another length of line that's going to attach to this piece here and that's going to allow us to remote mount this thing just a little ways further away from the tank than uh, this little lead allows us to. One last note on the very bottom of this thing is a drain line or a drain bung and what you'll do is you'll take the drain line kit, you'll hook in the one valve with the push connect and then um, or excuse me the one fitting with the push connect on it and that's just going to run to somewhere where you're comfortable having it drain the fluids that build up inside of the air tank. It's important to understand that water air separators and drain lines are very important for the inside of air tanks because air compressors create moisture because they are getting hot, they're sucking in cooler air, and what that does is it creates vapors and that has to go somewhere. So it ends up getting pumped into your system and that just simply has to get drained back. So very important thing to note. So let's, um, let's get this installed in the car and um, show you guys each of those steps. I am running the lines up kind of through the, the, the back here where the um, kind of some of like the main body framing is where like the wheel tubs um, kind of connect. There's like these braces that go up and down. So my hose only goes so far. Um, that's what she said. <laughs> my hose only goes so far that um, it's not going to reach the air compressor because I want the air compressor back, air compressor there, air tank back there. Getting myself mixed up. <laughs> so, it's not my favorite way to do this, but it'll work. I went and I picked up a lead. Uh, this is an air hose lead, so this is kind of like the air hose that comes off of your home air compressor and runs to like a splitter or something like that. In my case, I've got like air dryers and stuff, and then I've got like a six foot lead. Maybe it's 10 foot, I can't remember. So I grabbed a five foot piece. This is all that they have at my hardware store. If there was no two or three foot, which the three probably would have worked perfect, um, but that's fine. Um, I'll just end up coiling this up kind of in the back there. It's, it's not permanent. Like I would normally go to my local hydraulic pneumatic shop and actually have them make one exactly the right length, but we're strapped for time this week. We've got a car show coming up, so gotta get this stuff done. Um, what I'm going to do now is actually start connecting a lot of these fittings to the air tank. That really made noise. Um, I'm going to connect it to the air tank so that uh, we can move on to the electrical side of it, which, which is next. 
Um, it's coming out pretty good. I like the way that this looks so far. So, um, all right. Uh, I think I'm actually going to start by taping and connecting these guys. And then this one, the, this is a SMC check valve. So it's like a, um, really high quality check valve. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like the Vire ones are, they're okay, but if you want this thing to run a lot, and I mean, I don't really know what to expect with this car, so I just opted for the extra 30 bucks for the better check valve. I think that's all it was. So anyway, um, yeah, let's start connecting stuff and uh, making sure that's all sealed and taped. Okay, um, let's get a little bit of this wiring started. So uh, this is cool. Um, we've got a lot of nice wire that came with this kit. Um, in fact, there's actually a four gauge uh, battery, like main battery power line. Um, so that's so that you can run four gauges all the way back to the trunk. Um, pretty sweet. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why they supplied it the way that they did, because uh, it, it does kind of seem like overkill. I mean, maybe it's so that you can run a battery to the back, but in my case, I was not going to run for a V8. I wasn't going to run off a of four gauge. I was going to run, I ran the one aught. So anyway, it doesn't matter. They send you with that through bag riders. It's awesome. Um, so what I've got here is a relay and um, there's probably better videos that can describe the way that relays work in a lot more detail than I can. So I will just simply say that a relay is really cool. And it allows you to use lower voltage, or not lower voltage, lower amperage, um, lower current circuits to kick on a high current circuit. This thing's rated at 30 amps. And you could have a switch that's rated at 5 amps that switches this guy on. The way that it works, you got four poles on the bottom of this thing. Um, some of them have five poles. Uh, I won't get into the weeds on that again, but this one is uh, four poles because it only needs to operate in one fashion. It's a single pole, single throw. Um, your outermost ones, this is 85 and 86, and these guys are the signal. So this is what tells the relay what to do. So we need a ground on one side, we need 12 volts on the other side. And when those occur, so if you've got this thing uh, wired so that it's always got a ground signal on it, and then the other side is waiting for that 12 volt um, pulse, when that happens, it switches over, and then 87 and 30 now have continuity. So what you do is you run in your amperage, you run in your main power wire, and it can be upwards of 30 amps, and that's what we're doing in this case. So we've got a fuse holder. It's gonna be fused at 30 amps, that runs into our 87, and then this is your output. So from here, you are connecting up a, uh, basically to the, the, the compressor. So, and actually it already has a spade on it. So it would literally just connect up like that. And this side needs your, you know, your basically your voltage from the battery. And those things, unless these two 87 and 85 have, um, have juice running through them, you know, the ground and the 12 volts, uh, then it's not going to kick, kick it on. Um, and what's awesome about this is that we're able to use the switch from the um, pressure switch on the air compressor. There's 
damn it, air, pressure switch on the air tank to deliver a ignition switch 12 volts. I know, it's really, we're in the weeds here, but this is, this is how it works. It's very simple once you get looking at it. I might be just throwing a few, a little too much info at you, but yeah, so very simple. We're gonna get that connected right now. Um, we're gonna worry about running these leads back to the battery right away as well. Obviously, we gotta fuse it. So with this one. All right, let's get started. I got it. Sweet. Yeah. About the right amount that I needed, too. that I like to use. Take this, fish it through to where the line's got to go. Here we are. What I do is I'll attach the two longer leads to it. Wish they were closer in length, but I don't want to risk cutting anything because of how how short it all is. The more of the line you can attach it to, the better. And help it along, otherwise it'll pull it out. Or I'll pull it off. this as much as possible and let's get ready to move on to hooking up the relay. Okay, this ground is gonna be the main ground for the Vi air compressor. There we go. 
so we've got this guy to connect up to that too. So that is a spare 12 volt ignition. The reason I ran this is I knew that I was gonna run air suspension on this thing. I knew that I was gonna need a lead to run that off of. So here we go. Now, I need to snip this along the way and splice it into the um, switch on the side of the air tank, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and get a spade on here. Okay. Wires plucked out of the harness. I'll worry about making that nice and clean a little later. And I located, located the wire right here. So what I'll do is I'll snip that in half. I'll run up to one of the leads, or excuse me, one of the connectors, poles, one of the <laughs> poles off of the uh, switch there, uh, which will be feed, and one of them, like it'll be the 12 volts from the car, and then the other one is for the switch side, and that's going to go back to the, back to the relay. Next thing that I'll do also is mount the uh, compressor tank, and I'll figure out the center line and all that kind of stuff so I can secure it down. One nice thing about doing it this way is I can prop up this whole false floor so that I can actually drill and put in bolts to bolt that thing down. So uh, I'm going to get this wiring done. All right, it's easier to show you guys after doing the work because it's so tight in here. All right, so split those two blue wires down here, tucked to random up and behind, and then those are right there. So basically what you end up with is, um, you know, we've got that 12 volt ignition source that's going back. And when you split it, it goes to one side of the switch and then the other side goes to your relay. And uh, yeah, so when the switch tells it to kick on, it's gonna kick on the air compressor to fill this thing. And I think it's set at like 130 PSI. So that's done. She's anchored down, able to use nuts and bolts on that. So that's cool. Plug up here, but now that I think about it, I actually might just do like a, I might do a gauge there. And then over here, you've got your water trap. And then I've got that angled, that push to connect angled. So that it's going to go through this little hole right here that I made. And then it will follow these lines. So this will be the main feed. Haven't decided how I'm going to feed the back of the car yet. Uh, when I get the rear suspension figured out. Whenever those damn airs, airbags come in. Because apparently Ride Tech is out of air sleeves and just didn't tell anybody. So. <laughs> let's air this thing up and uh, let's test her out. So there's our relay. Worked out pretty good. I gotta figure out how to protect that and kind of secure it. I'm not really sure how I'll do that yet, but easy enough. Just barely made it. I actually still have to connect to the battery, so not time to air it up. <laughs> and I gotta connect lines and stuff like that anyways, so. Uh, but we're very close. Oh, 
Okay, battery's hooked up. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's not my, uh, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'll tolerate it, but it's, uh, it's not as good as I'd like it to look. But it's gonna work. Man, I have just, I gotta take a moment to just appreciate this. I can't believe how good this came out. Air compressor just tucks in the corner real nice. You can barely see the lines coming down for it. For the tank, tuck back the battery. We got our spare tire. That's the drain, but I actually got that hooked up to an air chuck just in case I have to air up the tank through, through that, through the drain. And then this uh, beautiful little touch. Man, I'm happy with how this came out. Okay, let's try this out. Moment of truth. That is loud. <laughs> It'll be a lot better once there's a back seat in there. It's funny, it's already getting warm. Decent voltage. See how much air is in it. Ooh, car goes up. Oh yeah. Sounds good. I don't hear any any noises. Voltage hot back up to twelve two. That's good. Let's go up with the air pressure a little bit. Ooh, boy, she goes straight up. Wow. Nice. Now she's riding like a, <laughs> like a tail dragger. Holy shit. That's hilarious. Wow, first time airing it up. Worked out all right. That's exciting. <laughs> Man. I will never get tired of that. <laughs> um, so hey guys, uh, thank you very much for tuning in for another episode of the Shoebox Ford build. We got our manual valve set up. Um, huge thanks goes out to Brody for upholstering uh, that box uh, that houses the paddle valves. It, it looks so damn good. And I think like once we get these seats in, um, either upholstered or if I get some aftermarket ones that are kind of similar color stitching and all that stuff, it's gonna look awesome together. But hey, hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Um, very simple setup, manual air suspension is a piece of cake. Um, the fun part is just tracking down the air leaks. So if you have them, hopefully you don't have them. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys on the next video.